to present the Impact Award for Excellence in Housing, please welcome to the stage the Executive Director of the Furman Centre, Sarah Jurek and Geraldine Perrine. Hello, again. Um, so, Mike, I, it's hard for me to see you because of the light, but um, I want to pre-warn you that since you refuse to provide us any of your own photos, we have improvised some photos for you, which you'll see during Sarah's part. But um, about 15 years ago, um, when I was at HPD, a paper about in-rem housing appeared in my inbox with a note from Richard Roberts, who was then the commissioner, and the note just said, read and comment. So I started reading it and I wrote comments in the margin like, totally wrong, not what happened, and then who the hell wrote this? Um, I put it in my outbox and forgot all about it. Time passed and I got called to Richard's office for a meeting, didn't know what it was about, and there's a guy sitting there and he's holding the draft of this thing with my comments in it. And I realized that Richard had just passed it on to him and that the guy was the author. Um, and I thought, this is really going to be unpleasant for all of us. Um, but instead, Mike just burst into a big smile and shook my hand and began to thank me profusely for my comments. Um, I still don't know if he actually meant that or it was just this really great technique uh, for disarming critics. But either way, I was instantly hooked and knew I had found a friend. Mike's work at Furman was marked by his careful, conducted research that policymakers and the public could always rely on. He was expert at vigorously defending his positions, but in the nicest possible way, a skill I really envy. Under the innovative leadership of Vicki Bean, Ingrid Gould Ellen, and now Sarah Jurek, Furman has become a critical partner in housing, planning, and community development in New York City. We know that Mike is enormously proud of the legacy he left here and of the important work that the team at Furman continues to do. We just wanted to take a few minutes today to let him know how proud we are of him. So I'm here today on behalf of the entire Furman Center team to congratulate all the honorees, and I'd especially like to congratulate Geraldine and the board and staff of CHPC, we're a better city providing better affordable housing because of your work. As many of you know, Geraldine loves anniversaries. So if you've been around her at all lately, you've been reminded that there are some pretty hefty milestones coming up in 2011, including the 50th anniversary of the zoning resolution and the 110th anniversary of the New York City Tenement Law. I'm expecting a well-deserved extravaganza for the 75th birthday of CHPC in 2012. And if you're really quiet, I think you could hear the Highbridge Voices Choir already practicing their happy birthday to you. I have another milestone to share with you, though. 30 years ago this week, Mike Schill and I sat in a classroom for a class called Law and Urban Planning our senior year of college. While most seniors in April were mentally and even physically checked out, Mike would insist on sitting for hours after class, arguing about the appropriate level of government intervention in affordable housing. One of us would be the socialist, and one of us would be the capitalist, and I think we changed places a lot. Although Mike outgrew his college wild man days, it wasn't a surprise to his friends that he built an incredible reputation as a teacher and as a legal scholar. What was unexpected, and it probably shouldn't have been unexpected, was that Mike also built and transformed institutions as he went along. As my colleague Vicki Bean says, Mike is a builder. His academic research built new ways of thinking about problems, ranging from fair housing to one government's condemnation of another government's land. He built confidence and critical thinking skills in all the students lucky enough to work with him. He built the foundation for change in his path-breaking policy analyses like reducing the cost of new construction in New York City. And he's built institutions that have a far greater impact than they would without him. Mike's career is amazing. Even after his abandonment of New York City in 2004 for the left coast lifestyle of fast cars and Hollywood after parties, Mike continued his firm commitment to integrating research and policy. He has transformed institutions that not only produce brilliant research, but also great researchers and practitioners. 
Mike has switched again, recently leaving sprawling, sunny Southern California for the freezing, free market environment of the University of Chicago. But those of us who've known Mike for 30 years can attest that he won't be swayed by any ideology. Mike's commitment to empirical knowledge and evidence-based policy is his legacy for our housing industry here. And that is why it is such an honor to join Gerilyn in presenting this award. Mike Schill. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, uh, I'm glad I didn't give you any pictures, actually. But the, you picked better ones than I would have picked. It's really wonderful to be back in, in New York uh, with so many of my old friends. It actually feels like I never left the city. Uh, for many years, I attended these luncheons and the housing conference luncheons, but I never dreamed that I would be honored and be up here with such an amazing group of people. Um, it, it really is an enormous honor, even more enormous because I've known Geraldine for a long time, and, and she's a pretty tough judge of character, a uh, tough judge of a lot of things. And to, to hear those really nice things come out of your mouth really means so much for me, and you're doing such a great job at CHPC, which is such a, an, an enormously wonderful organization. Now, the reason for the honor is, for, for my honor being here, uh, why I feel honored, is that New York City's housing community is like no other in the world. When I came to New York as a young faculty member from Philadelphia, I was attracted by the opportunity to work and study the most interesting and important housing market in, this, in the nation. But more importantly, I was also attracted by the opportunity to work and learn alongside all of you, the most extraordinary group of housing professionals in the world. Indeed, before I made the decision to come here, I actually called Sarah, who I, as you now know, we went to college together, and I asked her if I'd be welcomed as an outsider into your community. She said that she and her friend Jerry Salama, who's also here today, would connect me up with people. I came, they did, and the idea of the Furman Center was born. Nowhere else in the world is housing more important than in New York. And the extraordinary thing, which I don't know if we all recognize when we're doing it, is that it isn't just about politics in New York. Politics plays its role, but it's not just about politics. Nowhere in the world is research more important to guide policy. And that's why we began the Furman Center. I learned so much during my time here. Not only did all of you teach me about housing, but I also learned something for my current job. New York's housing community actually is a bit like a law school faculty. Uh, a big group of disputatious, competitive, brilliant, and committed people, all of whom are striving toward the same goal, but with different ways of getting there. Working with you all helped me appreciate how to harness and, and sort of feed off of that type of energy. Now, the Furman Center would not have been possible without the support of two great deans at NYU School of Law, John Sexton and Ricky Rivez. It, wouldn't all, it also wouldn't have been possible without the extraordinary financial support of the indomitable Jay Furman and now starting the Institute for Affordable Housing and Policy, Ron Molis. It wouldn't have flourished without the support from a set of extraordinary housing commissioners, including Debbie Wright, Richard Roberts, my former student, Geraldine Perrine, Sean Donovan, and now Rafael Sesteros. When I look at the Furman Center, I see, today when I look at the Furman Center, I see how the reality far outpaced my initial vision. When I left, there were three full-time employees, including one research fellow. Today, the center has six full-time employees and five postdoctoral fellows. Another 45 faculty and researchers are affiliated. Its research is respected and relied upon throughout the nation. Simply put, the Furman Center at NYU is the finest academic center of its kind in the nation. That growth, that extraordinary achievement, is not my achievement. It belongs to an extraordinary leadership team of Vicki Bean, who is also with you today, Ingrid Ellen, also here, and now Sarah Jarek. So I would like to share my award with them today. 
Thank you.